It's a tale as old as time. Boy meets saloon owner woman and falls in love because she reminds him of his mother. Wait, that's not right. We open on Joe returning from a successful trip to San Francisco when his brothers meet him at the stage and rush to invite him into Julius Palace, a swanky saloon. That's what David Dortort had to call it back in 59, and that's what I have to call it, too, lest the lizard overlords rebuke my nerd privileges. Feel free to look it up. Just uh, keep my comment section all fluffy bunnies, okay? Thank you kindly. Run by the lovely and cynical Julia Bulette. Just as Joe is about to make up his mind, a man is injured from inside by John Mullane, an on-again, off-again suitor of the place's namesake. While the older son's backs are turned, Joe steps inside and gets in the middle of the argument between lovers and incurs Mullane's wrath. Julia conks Mullane in the head just as the credits roll. I have to admit, while I love the regular credits that come up later on, I really like the look of this one too. Also, the set for Julia's Palace is the same as the International House Hotel. Either it's supposed to be the same building, or they just reused the set. I think it's the, the former, because I don't think they had the hotel yet, because Virginia City was so new. When we return, Julia offers to thank Joe by inviting him to a free dinner at the palace in the near future. Joe being Joe, he accepts. Later that night, Joe must have told Ben all about it because the first thing we hear him ask is if Ben thinks Julia knew Marie. Ben waves off the idea, saying that they were from two very different areas of New Orleans. At first, I felt like this was an error, knowing what we later find out about Marie. But later on in the episode, this notion is corrected, so Ben must just think Joe doesn't know about Marie's past, which makes sense. Next, we get that same reusable shot of Virginia City that I love. Ben is attending a meeting of the leading citizens and is shocked to find Julia there, having been asked to join. Turns out the good folks need money, and it's established that she can convince the miners to give more money than the Ponderosa can give? Hmm. I'd kind of like to see your sources on that one. Maybe because the Ponderosa's still new. Julia makes a passing reference to Ben that she has plans to get to after the meeting. Him not realizing that she's talking about Joe. Julia takes bids for a bottle of brandy, and Joe shells out a whopping $500. Joe says he doesn't have the money on him, so Julia pays it for him. Mullane teases Joe about not getting his allowance. Yep, he's back in the place already. Killing cockroaches is not an easy job, especially if they have accents. Those things have guts of steel. Julia tries to save Joe's life by getting him to her room before a fight breaks out. Once upstairs, Joe calls the town people hypocrites, and she tells him that he'll get that way too when he's a little older. She kisses him and then backs off. One is left to wonder if it's pangs of guilt or is she just teasing him on purpose. Then Joe breaks out that line that every girl longs to hear, you remind me of my mommy. I imagine with the age difference, she was just thrilled. That fight Mullane wants begins as soon as Joe leaves the safety of the lady's suite and the two big brothers step in to keep it honest in a scene that I adore. I cringe, though, when Joe falls over the staircase, and I wonder if that was Mike or a stuntman. The fight ends with Adam slinging Joe over his back and casually finishing his beer. At home, Ben seems to care more about the money Joe offered for the brandy. About Julia, he says, She's seen more of the world than you have, and gives Joe a look that made me laugh so hard I couldn't breathe. I'll be including that one in the thumbnail for this video for sure. Doc stops by the following day and casually mentions that there might be an epidemic coming their way that is starting in the mines. They shelf that conversation to instead talk about how Joe's making the town look bad by being seen everywhere with that woman. So Ben decides it might work better if he goes to Julia and reasons with her instead of Joe. He's also a mite more level-headed and polite than I would have been if an older woman were sniffing around my son reputation or not. She says she'll think about it, and he just accepts that. Not a moment after Ben leaves, she heads down and tells her bartender that she wants to see Joe, and we learn through him that she had said she didn't want to see him again previously. Ben's words might have actually made things worse for his cause. He had orig She had originally decided she didn't want to see him, but then Ben opened his mouth. 
Joe goes on seeing her, and Ben tries again to reason with him once he gets home late from spending a day with her. This is when we find out that Joe has heard Ben and Adam talking in the past about Marie's reputation and how she was looked down upon. Later, in a fun scene between Haas and Hopsing, Hopsing is struggling to lift barrels of water that they're bringing for the sick people in town, and Haas lends his strength. The cook tricks Haas into doing all the work. He's been learning from Joe. Ben soon finds out from Adam that Joe has moved into town to be closer to Julia, and he cautions Ben to use restraint. He really does seek to understand Joe in this episode, and it's one of those little gems that we're blessed with between the brothers without even having them sharing the scene. Quickly after getting to town, they find Joe brawling in the opera house. Turns out they were asked to sit away from the other guests because of Julia's line of work. Joe refuses to come home, and Julia freely admits to Ben that she's using Joe to hurt him. She shows herself to be a complex person, though, when she turns right around and offers her saloon as a makeshift hospital when they discover that the fever is worse. In a line that confuses the heck out of me, Ben actually dismisses the idea of helping out. Joe sets him straight, though, and goes with Julia. Doc sees the good in Julia at that moment, and those willing to help all go to work. After days of non-stop work, Doc convinces Joe and Julia to take a break. As she's stroking Joe's hair while he's asleep in the quiet night air, we start to see her realize that he is really too young and she's doing him wrong. When he wakes up, she tries to explain it to him. In French, she tells him that it should have happened years ago. If only she were younger. As things start to go back to normal in town, Ben apologizes to Julia and says she's welcome in the family if Joe wants her because he won't gamble with something he can't replace. Parents who have disagreements with their children could really think about that line. Some things just aren't worth fighting over. She starts to push Joe away and flirts with other patrons of the palace in front of him. He persists, though, and Melaine returns. Apparently, Julia had sent him away to keep him far away from Joe, and he's just now become wise of it and turned around and come back. He draws on Joe, and Joe shoots him in the arm. Julia runs to him, hurting Joe's heart. She tells John that she could never hate him in the past because she would have had to hate herself to do that. He makes his threats against her that will become relevant by the end of the episode. Joe's in another saloon, nursing his heartache and replacing it with a mean hangover, when his brothers come in and try to convince him to go see Ben make a speech as he's honored for his work against the fever. Talk about a slap in the face to the woman who actually did all the work. Joe attends and promptly takes the platform from his paw and uses it to promote Julia's efforts. They take out a red fireman's hat and present it to Julia, and Joe competes with the offer by asking for her hand. She walks away, breaking his poor little heart again. The next we hear of her is that Melaine robbed and stabbed her. We get this news from the sheriff that they have recently hired, presumably in part with Julia's donation. Melaine is soon caught and jailed. The wound is fatal, though, and Ben visits her first. She tells him that she's giving him back his son, and she does, just that, by telling Joe that she never really cared about him. Her resolve breaks, though, and she cries in his arms before sending him away. The final scene of the four Cartwrights shows them standing outside, watching the window to her room. When the light goes out, we know she's died. I like this one more than I used to. Again, we have a historical figure in Julia Bulette who actually did own an establishment in Virginia City and was actually murdered by John Mullane. I like how they humanize her and show that she does have a heart. I admit that I don't quite get the animosity between her and Ben, though, because they seem to have had problems with each other before it became about Joe. Why does she want to punish him? What's with the personal vendetta? Is there something there that we didn't see? The scenes between the brothers are fantastic. By now the show has found its niche. Ben has a couple of rough edges in this one, but nowhere near what he used to. He shows his love for Joe that would become iconic by the show's end. If you want to see something based on historical accuracy about Julia Bulette, you could watch that one episode of Ghost Adventures on Virginia City, but I like this better. Okay, maybe I like that episode of Ghost Adventures, too? But they never mention Bonanza the whole time they're in Virginia City. And it annoys me. 